One time I was staying at this homeless shelter, Hope Haven, uh, in Kingsport, Tennessee, and the rule was if you didn't go to church on Sunday, you couldn't sleep there that night. And uh, me and my friend Paul David Miller, we overslept and didn't go to church. And so we were like trying to get dibs on this abandoned car out back so we could have a place to sleep. But then this guy showed up at the homeless shelter and he was wearing like regular clothes, looked like a regular guy. And um, he was like, hey, anyone want to go to the mall? I'll buy you lunch and something like that. And we were like, sure, Paul. I didn't ever say anything, but Paul David Miller was like, yeah, oh yeah, come on. And so then, um, we went to the mall and the whole time we were hanging out with this guy he was like uh, do you like rock and roll there's rock and roll at my church do you like girls there's a lot of girls at my church y'all need a job there's people that can get you a job at my church. He even said, uh, uh, do you need a car? Uh, there's people that have cheap cars at my church. Jesus is walking, stigmatic, infected. The beast in the pocket, go ahead and inject it. Jericho in the drip, with Merlot on the lip. Body and blood, testament taking the trip. Taking your dollars, call it collection. Calling God a collect. From a site of correction, pharmaceutical using this in the spirit delicious. In the clutches of circumstance, still remaining invictus. And uh, this girl was on stage, and like when you get ready to puke, uh, your cheeks kind of puff up. You can tell when someone's getting ready to vomit. And so then she started puffing up her cheeks a whole bunch and then she jumped off the stage and started running up the aisle and the people, the guy and Paul David Miller were behind me and I said, look out, this girl's got about ready to get sick, like that, and she busted through the door and straight into the girl's room and you could hear her getting sick in there and I said to the guy that brought us there, I said, uh, aren't you gonna send someone in there after her to see if she's okay? And he said, nah, she's just spitting out demons. We do that here. Devil under the tongue, he been eating the wafers, getting drunk off of wine, his designer for waivers. Are you feeling the heat? Check the vent in the ceiling. That shit is off, it's the fire that the preacher was speaking. Tongues parched, put quill on the parchment. Stop looking for arcs. The hole where the heart went is ripping the part. The little apartment of the bleeding heat and frequent in the park bench. And they had my arms held out like uh, like a spread eagle or something in the air. And this one guy started going, like that. And then this big, huge, uh, big, huge guy comes up, grabs me around the waist like he wants to dance or something. And then he starts pushing on my head really hard and saying, best start speaking in that God-given tongue, boy. You best start speaking in that God-given tongue, boy. Speak the light of the Lord. It should sound like a curse. How could the tongue of the chosen one translate in your verse? Make the melody foreign. I could jump in the levels. But then they thought I was the devil. Shit, well maybe you are. Has your brain been idle? Do you study the details when you're reading your Bible? Cause you know that's where he lives, so don't be reading too close. Just keep looking for God in the spiral and smoke. And then they pushed me all the way up these stairs and into a closet. And it was totally dark in this closet. And then all of a sudden, like after like two minutes or something, the door opens up and I get hit in the chest with soaking wet orange, bright orange jail jumpsuit. And the cop says, uh, get your bottoms off. Get your bottoms off. Like that. And so I just got my bottoms off. I was like scared to death. I was in this closet of this crazy church. And so then uh, they opened up the door and they said, come on, come on, like this. And then uh, 
I looked and there was a pool upstairs with fake rocks and fake plants. And then uh, he, the guy who was in the water and put his leg up on a rock and was like, come on, come on, like that. And then uh, I went down in the pool and he said to hold, how to hold my arms. And he said, when I dunk you under this water, you're going to feel really cold. But when I pull you up out of this water, you best be speaking in that God-given tongue, boy. Say it, say it, say it till you feel it. Feel like dancing on the ceiling. Feel like sitting on a million. Feel like everything equated to success is really nothing more than compensating for not being blessed. Now strip, see the pole, climb it like stairs to heaven. Stars are higher than you could possibly ever be getting. And sever all of be getting unless you be getting married. Just play with your genitalia you for Jesus until you ready. This little bitty guy with glasses all of a sudden jumps out of one of these rooms and gets in front of me. And I kept trying to like walk around him, but he kept stepping in front of me. He's like, I know, I know you've had a long night. I just need to ask you a few questions before you leave. I know it's been a very eventful night. Uh, just come on in this room and answer a few questions. And so I said, okay. I'm going to go in this room, I'm going to answer his questions, and then I'm going to walk straight out of this room and walk straight out of this church and sleep at the homeless shelter. And so then I go in the room, he never even turned the light on, and he had a clipboard, and it had different thing questions on it, and he said, uh, he looked at me and he said, uh, Holy Spirit, and he made a little check mark, and then he said, uh, spoke in tongues and check like this and he said baptize and check and he just went down this list of all these things they did to me against my will and uh, I never said anything and then he says well what we do is we send people to your house uh, I guess he didn't know we were at the homeless show he said we send two people to your house and then we teach you the Bible and I said, well, I've read, I've read the Bible three times, Old Testament and New Front to Back in prison. I know the Bible. That's, I don't need anyone coming to my house. Three things first, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Holy water, hallelujah, hold your daughter close. Hold up the Bible and pollution, light it, holy smoke. Drop them bombs on the Quran before they drop them first. And if you drop it like it's hot, you better open up your soul to Jesus Christ, ready or not. Let him carry the cross for you, just take a load off. Come in the water, bring it started, washing off all the dross. They would come to the homeless shelter right away to try to get us and bring us back to every service. I don't know how many they had a week could lose a lot and so I just said well I'm gonna get a job I gotta get a job and I gotta move out of this homeless shelter to get these cult freak people after me away from me and so I got a job at McDonald's and rented a room in this biker house and they were just constantly making meth and fighting each other for fun and knocking each other's teeth out and looking like monsters and stuff. And then one day I was at work and they said two guys came looking for me and they knew they were from that church. And so then one of the bikers, Chris, when they came in, he said, yeah, Brian lives here. He's a, he lives upstairs. He's up there. And so he let them go upstairs, but he had a, a sawed-off 10-gauge shotgun. And then um, he followed them up the stairs, and once they knocked and I didn't answer, he pulled out the shotgun, and he said, I've got 666 tattooed on the head of my dick. Y'all want to suck it? Like that. And then he pointed, and I'm sure he pointed at him because he was crazy like that. And and then uh, they never came back for me again.